Ever since Iran elected a new president nearly two years ago, I've been applying for a visa to come here. So, uh, do I need anything in particular to get this press pass? Just my passport? Uh, they're just going to take a picture of you, that's all. Okay. And you have to flood uh, one or two forms. Uh -huh. On my last trip five years ago, the nation's slogan was dialogue among civilizations. Now, thanks to Iran's nuclear program, it's facing sanctions and the threat of war. The man leading the country on this apparent collision course is President Mahmoud Ahmadinejad. While he was voted in on the promise of bringing wealth to the poor, it's the nuclear issue he's since embraced, taking on perceived Western hypocrisy. Here in the city of Karaj, many Iranians have come to give their president letters containing their personal concerns. This is a hallmark of this self-styled man of the people. He's apparently received five million letters since he became president. But how closely is he reading their concerns? One sign that President Ahmadinejad's popularity could be on the decline came in local council elections in December. Across the country, Ahmadinejad and his supporters suffered heavy defeats. Here in Tehran, they won only two out of 15 seats in the local council. These losses in Tehran are particularly significant for a man who was once the mayor of this city. I've come to Friday prayers at Tehran University a good place to gauge what the conservative religious elements in Iran are thinking. I'm only allowed to film from the women's section and can't see today's speaker, but it's Akbar Hashemi Rafsanjani, an influential cleric and former president. He's delivering a message to the West about Iran's nuclear program, a message that's almost a mantra in Iran nowadays. ما حاضریم به شما اطمینان کامل بدیم و میدانیم اگر در شرایط درست به مذاکره بنشینیم شما مطمئن میشید که ایران همونی که خودتون برای ما چیزی غیر از اون در برنامه ایران نیست و ما این رو قبلا در عمل اثبات کردیم بارها under Ahmadinejad Iran seems prepared to risk everything to achieve their aim at what point, though, will you question, is it worth a very high price to pay? The only price which we are not going to pay, and definitely we will not pay, is to ignore from the right of our nation. We cannot accept this discrimination approach in the international relations. But will it have such a tangible benefit for the Iranian people that it will be worth, we, worth we, this? We, we are going to, to spend tens of billions of dollars for production of 20,000 megawatts of electricity in our country through nuclear power plants. It is our national interest, you know, for our nation. Back outside after Friday prayers, ordinary Iranians are embracing this political message. The nuclear issue is one of the scientist issues in Iran and all over the world, and all the people of the world has the right, an equal right, for uh, reaching to this point, and it is part of the scientific uh, effort of the Iranian nations. From an Iranian perspective, 
there's a deep sense of outrage that they're being denied what other countries have. More than 70% of the energy of France comes from the atomic power. And we have the right. Many Iranians uh, feel that, think that uh, the West is against us, not for the nuclear program per se, but the West is against Iran uh, not to advance scientifically. This is something that, 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 that many Iranians believe. Until the Islamic Revolution of 1979 that removed the American-backed Shah and installed Ayatollah Khomeini in power, this compound was a United States embassy in Tehran. These murals tell the Iranian history of American interference in their country. For many, the nuclear debate is seen in this context. این گذشته پر افتخار همیشه برای ایران بوده و هست و اینم بدونید از زمان قدیم از چند سال پیش از همیشه ای که ایران برای خودش ایران بوده یه عده میخواستن دست اندازی کنن تو کشور ما شما برگردیم به دوره قاجار برگردیم به دوره پهلوی برگردیم به اوایل انقلاب همیشه به نوعی کشورهای روس انگلیس و آمریکا میخواستن تفرقه بندازن تو این مملکت me? All these people are like Ahmadinejad. Every of them is one Ahmadinejad. What is it that you like about President Ahmadinejad? Everything. He is the most brave man in the history of the Muslim world. Ahmadinejad is the most brave man in the history of the همان اسلحه ای که اول امام با اون اسلحه با دنیا طرف شد و ملت ما پیروز شد و دوباره داره زنده می کنه الله اکبر الله اکبر الله اکبر بیکاز هی هز بین اکتینگ از دی چمپیون آف آف رزیستینگ یو اس پرشر اند این ا وی he has identified himself very much with Iran's nuclear program. So, so in a sense, if you go after him, uh, you, you sort of look a bit unpatriotic. Despite having the power of patriotism on his side, people are speaking out against Ahmadinejad, an extraordinary thing in a country where free speech has both limits and consequences. I'm heading to the north of Tehran to see one of his critics. Dr. Ebrahim Yazdi was Iran's first foreign minister after the revolution. He soon fell out with the leadership though and became a dissident voice who's faced arrest many times. You know, when I was not here five years ago and the uh, security forces, they came and they took many of my pictures with Khomeini. I know I don't have it. I had some in my office, but now I don't have it. Ahmadinejad says that he wanted to re, uh, re refresh or rearrange everything in accordance with the first days of the revolution. This is impossible. The generation of the revolution is different than this generation. Therefore, when he is talking, everybody uh, look around like uh, 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 he is talking nonsense. While Dr. Yazdi supports in principle Iran's right to nuclear technology, he thinks the issue is being manipulated by a populist president. Many governments like Iranian governments in the world, uh, when they have uh, failed to give the proper services that people expect, then they try to uh, bring a foreign threat, replace it with a foreign threat. Uh, I'm afraid that even today the uh, Bush administration played the same game, uh, exaggerating the foreign uh, threat. The same thing in Iran. Dr. Yazdi accuses the president of exaggerating the nuclear issue to disguise the fact he's failed on his key election promise of reducing the gap between rich and poor. To find out more, I take a trip to Tehran's main bazaar, the 
economic heartbeat of the country. Despite it being the lead up to Iranian New Year, the owner of this decorations shop, Saeed, tells me business is slow. Uh, I think my customer, most of my customers are, uh, uh, do not, uh, uh, they are not optimistic in for, for the future. They uh, feel worried about the future. Therefore, uh, as you know, our items, our merchandise, our decoration, and uh, when they do not uh, feel secure, they do not uh, buy some uh, some uh, kind of things, some decorations. They pre prefer to pay for uh, something in basic, for example, food and uh, something like this. It's the same story in this cosmetic shop. How bad has it been compared to other years? We are a son, what solar peach, Mohim Tamyam, that one, that was that we don't want to finish. I don't show them much or from Hansh. I'm going to marry them, push them while I'm going to be in seven of Jangi situation. How is business now? It's not good. It's not good here. Matavi owns and runs a plastics business. He tells me he can only afford to pay his sole employee around 140 US dollars a month. I soon discover what a sensitive issue the economy is. What do you think is the reason for the economy being bad? You see, about the politics problem, of course. Just that. Economic problems. It's just part of the problem. So you were saying the problem is politics. What do you mean by that? I cannot tell you. Well, don't tell me about that. It, it makes problem for me. Take it easy. Any of the persons in, in Iran cannot talk about the politics so much. It makes problem for them. Take it easy. Okay. Please. Okay, no problem. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It's little wonder ordinary Iranians are scared of speaking out when you consider what's happened to those further up the food chain. Economist Saeed Leilaz says the president personally had him sacked from his government job for criticising his economic policies. There have been a lot of people. There are a lot of people who have to, who have to leave their job because of their warning and publish, publishing their opinion about the economy or about the politics and so on. Why do you think it is that the president is so sensitive about the economy? Uh, this is because that he failed in his economic policies, I believe. Frankly speaking, honestly, even there is, n there is not one policy which has been successful by him since past 16, 17 months ago. The biggest problem, according to economists like Leilaz, is the president's spending spree. On entering office, he took billions of dollars from Iran's oil stabilization fund, a reserve of excess oil revenues. He spent up big on infrastructure projects, subsidies to the people, new government jobs and salary increases. This dramatic expenditure led to a surge in inflation. Everybody is worried, especially the Supreme Leader personally has uh, su supervising the situation and because of this inflation rate which increasing very fast. Economists are warning that uncontrolled inflation could lead to disaster. I believe the main reason is a huge gap between the social classes in the society. There are a lot of poor people who uh, cannot uh, save themselves in potential wave of inflation rate. In, in this case, there are a lot of people who cannot receive even enough money for continuing their life. And because of this, uh, there will be unrest and uh, social turbulences in the country. This dire prediction is being heard. Despite the warm welcome the president received in parliament last month, there is serious discontent here. In an unprecedented move, 
150 members of the conservative-dominated parliament, or Majlis, signed a letter criticising his economic policies. Significantly, the discontent is not coming just from his political opponents. They are actually coming from uh, his own um, rank. A number of um, senior conservative uh, figures, particularly in, uh, in, in Majlis, uh, have actually been highly critical of uh, Ahmadinejad's uh, mainly uh, economical uh, policies. Ahmadinejad has also come under fire for some of his other contentious forays into foreign policy, such as publicly questioning the truth of the Holocaust and calling for Israel to be wiped off the map. Dr Afarida is a reformist member of parliament and keen advocate of Iran's nuclear program. However, he thinks the issue has been mishandled. The fact a member of parliament is prepared to speak out is an indication of the mood here. You see, uh, in my opinion, uh, President brought some argument. This was not necessary to, he mixed some argument to a nuclear issue, for example. The time Iranian case was discussing the UN, he, talked to call, he started to talk about Holocaust. This was very big damage to Iranian benefit. What does it have to do with our national security? It has uh, brought up the more negative response, increased the pressure on Iran. It is not a wise policy to say and to do things to solidify the front against Iran. You know, foreign policy basically must, the mission is, or function is, to reduce foreign tension. One of the most damaging critiques came from a newspaper called Jomhuri Islami. This is not just any newspaper. It's seen as close to the supreme leader and the semi-official voice of the hardline clerical establishment. In an open letter to the president, it said, We acknowledge your endeavours to campaign for Iran's rights to develop nuclear energy. However, it went on. What is the need for such aggressive rhetoric when it can only provide a pretext for the bullies to exert further foreign pressure. The way you have been presenting the nuclear debate would lead the listener to form the view that you are exaggerating the significance of the issue in order to divert the public's attention from other failures of your government. This editorial led to speculation that Ahmadinejad may have lost the support of Iran's supreme leader, Ayatollah Khamenei. If so, it's a sure sign of political death in Iran. We cannot say uh, definitely or categorically that the, same, that, that the Supreme Leader has withdrawn his, his support for, uh, for Ahmadinejad. What we can say is that uh, the Supreme Leader is no longer uh, willing to give him carte blanche, to give him absolute uh, support, to give him point-blank uh, support. Would you agree that there is some domestic concern within Iran now about the conflict situation that, it, that is developing? There, there are some critics who are saying that the president has been too defiant, too confrontational. If you are talking there are different opinions for uh, the, the daily life, economic, politics and the others. We have an alive society, very active society, even politically. And that is quite normal, natural. The people are deciding here. And uh, the nuclear issue is a consensus issue in the country. While considerable unease about Ahmadinejad does exist in Iran, there is still comprehensive political support for the nuclear program. The foreign minister warns any outsiders not to place their hopes on any disunity within Iran. We do not have any problem among ourselves inside the country. 
those who are going to invest on this possibility, they will lose. They will not get benefits. Nevertheless, there have been strong rumors that the numbers are being gathered in parliament to impeach the president. Do you think that's a real possibility? I don't think it is real possibility for the time being. I think in a sense, uh, maybe the nuclear issue is a, is a godsend uh, issue to help him. Because obviously, even a, a school a child would tell you that uh, it's very unwise to impeach him uh, whilst Iran is under so much pressure from, uh, from, from outside uh, over its nuclear issue. Ironically, it could be pressure from the West that saves Ahmadinejad's political skin. It could also gain him more support from the people. It's early morning in Tehran's bazaar, and Hussein Haddad is opening up his shop. Hussein is a metal worker. I met him early on in my trip at Friday Prayers. A politically conservative and religious man, he begins his work day by reading the Quran. He didn't support Ahmadinejad in the presidential elections. In fact, he campaigned on behalf of his main rival. But that has now changed. Even though you didn't vote for him in the last election, do you now call yourself a supporter of President Ahmadinejad? Bad. And why? What's changed? The threats from America have convinced Hussein to now support the president. Does the majority of the bazaar still support President Ahmadinejad? Mr. Bahman, I think that the people are not in the same way. I mean, the thing that we are in the same way, we are in the same way. We are in the same way. Millions of Iranian, millions and millions of Iranian would rally behind the Islamic regime if it is attacked by the United States or, or any other foreign power. I, it is one thing for me to criticize Ahmadinejad, but if Ahmadinejad is attacked by the United States, I'm the first person who would defend Ahmadinejad, who would rally behind Ahmadinejad. I have no other choice.